welcome to episode 9 of Mischief Maker Podcast. Uh, my name is Jade Crosser. I am your co-host, or co-hosting with my daughter. My name is Skylar, and I'm Little Stitch Maker, little stitch maker on Instagram. And I am Stitch Mischief on, on Instagram, as well as Ravelry, and we have a podcasting or a podcast group in Ravelry called the Mischief Maker Podcast. So it's been a long time since we've podcasted and there are a few reasons for that. Um, I'll get into that in a couple minutes, but yeah, so it's been a couple months. Lots of things have jumped on my needles. Some things have jumped off, but less. And Skylar's making good progress on some fun stuff so that she'll share with you in a little bit. I just want to say for this episode, I'm keeping things a little bit more organic. Um, I'm not going to have set sections. I just want to cut down on editing time to make this more possible or doable for our family to film and also to keep the pressure low because that's part of the reason why we've taken two months. We, I say we, it's me. I'm just, <laughs> it was all in my head. Um, taken a tiny break from podcasting is I started to get a little bit um, putting too much pressure on myself to have X number of whips finished and be done this by this time. And, and then I got disappointed because life happens and all my whips aren't done. And, um, and then I wanted to start new things and I feel guilty about that. And yeah, it's just been a little bit stressful for me, not the actual podcasting, but my own um, expectations of myself for podcasting and how often I should be podcasting and all this stuff. So really, I just want to dial it back to we're just having fun. We make stuff. We want to share what we make. Um, talk about what patterns we're using, what yarns. I have been doing some fun dyeing um, lately and especially since I last podcasted that I'd like to talk about. And yeah, so I'm going to Oh, and I also didn't forget about the giveaway that we mentioned last, the Notions giveaway um, from last podcast. So I have the winners for that too, which I'll share at the um, end of the podcast. So do you want to show us what you're working on or what should we do? Um, well, I've made some progress on my knitting and I'm, I'm close-ish to being done, like 10 or so rows, I think. On the color work part, you mean? And not color work on. No, I think less than that. I mean, like total. Like on the color part, not the gray. Including the gray? I mean, I have like three, maybe even like five or six of these left, and then I just have to do all the gray rows, and then, then my cowl. Awesome. But there will be a big chunk of gray at the other end, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, can you hold it up for the camera? So, this is. Let's see, it's kind of funny lighting right now. The, can you talk about it? This is the Sagebrush Cowl by Knox Mountain Knit Co. And it's inside out. I'm like, why am I working? <laughs> there we I, go. I was wondering that too. <laughs> like this doesn't look right. I'm seeing your stitch join on the other end. Okay. So there it is. So this will be a cowl and this upper yarn is yarn that sky dyed. And you've seen it, if you've watched our podcasts for some time now, we've shown this, but she's making some serious progress, which is pretty fun. Right? Do you love it? Yeah. I'm excited to start the next thing when I'm done this. Yes. What is that going to be again? I can't remember. Socks. Socks. Very ambitious. <laughs> um, okay. So I have a finish that... I showed this on last last time. So I finished my for the star or from the stars cowl by Joy Adams. So this is it. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen I already posted about this, but I didn't know when I was gonna get to podcast. So it's and all of a sudden my mind's blinking out. I'll put the exact name at the bottom. It's either for the stars or from the stars. I think it's from the stars because of the, the memory involved. And hello, I have a baby visitor. Um, and this is in yarn that I dyed. The blue is Caribbean blue. 
and the um, white speckle is Huckleberry Memory. So that felt really nice to get off. It was a nice quick, quick um, knit and it has a beautiful, I just love the texture, especially this bit right here. I love it. Yeah, that's really nice. It's such a fun, fun texture. So that is finished. So I did finish something. And, and then I started all the things. <laughs> I, I go big or go home, apparently. I just jumped right off my I'm not going to start new projects things. Um, we talked a little bit, here it is, last time about wanting my wanting to make Sky wear a sweater. And Sky wanted to pick the colors that we would dye the yarn for. So she did, and I did, we dyed the yarn. And I am well through the body of Sky Bear's sweater. Let's see if I can untangle this. There we go. So this is extremely crumply, <laughs> but it's um this is Sky Bear's so faded. She chose the pattern and she chose the yarn colors um, based on she found a picture on. Pinterest, like a design seeds color scheme, and I dyed up the yarn for her. So it's so faded, and it's going down into a nice gray. Oh, my door's opening again. <laughs> okay, so it starts with beautiful purple and fades to more of a purpley gray as it goes down. So yeah, so I still have mm, maybe this much more to do on the bottom and the ribbing and sleeves and collar, and then she'll have herself a cozy sweater, hopefully very soon. So this yarn, okay, the pattern for this is a DK weight pattern. And I don't often knit with heavier weight yarns than fingering, simply because I don't have them on hand or you need so much more of them. And I had a new base we wanted to try and Sky Bear has sensitive skin like I do. And this is a part cashmere um, blend. It's a merino cashmere nylon. And it's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, so that is new. That base is new to my shop. It's called our Lux base. Um, Lux sock. So this is the final color that I'm doing her... I think it's the final, yeah, her bottom. And then I'll try and show them in order. So this is our first color. And I love this one. Second color. Third, and it has just the tiniest bit of lavender in there. It's almost like a shimmer. And then the last one here ignore all the tangles of yarn. <laughs> so that's been fun. So we've been working, uh, we, I've been working on that along with umpteen other, <laughs> other, um, projects. Do you, um, I'll show one more and then you can show what you've been working on too. Okay. Oh, so what I, just jumping around here. So with her sofa sweater, I converted the pattern to be fingering weight. The original pattern is DK. Our base is Lux and it's a sock or a fingering weight. So I used Tin Can Knit's um, blog post to do the math to figure out because it's just one size jump in yarn above like so it goes from like fingering to DK worsted and it's just one size difference. You can easily convert the um, pattern to be in fingering weight. So I'm knitting it in a very large size that she, it's not actually her size, but that's the right amount for her, my gauge and her measurements. And we've actually planned it to be a bit larger than she would normally need simply so that she can continue to wear it for a few years, hopefully. And yeah, so I converted that and did all the math on that. And I'm really hoping it all works out, but, um, but yeah, so I've knit that in fingering weight. If it's too big, I might just adopt it. But no, I think it'll fit. <laughs> I'm not going to take your sweat. Um, 
And another thing that helped on my needles is the Night Shift Shawl by Andrea Mowry. Now you know I'm a major fan of Andrea's. I love shapes and colors. I love everything she does. And she knit her sample of this in Spin Cycle Yarns, which I don't have uh, any of. One day I'd like to get down there and see them. They're not that far from us in Bellingham. We are just in the other side of the border in Canada. But, um, but again, because I had this luck space, I wanted to make it out of that because it's so soft. And also this could be a, um, a sample for Knit City next, I say next year, it's this year <laughs> in October. So I converted this pattern <laughs> to fingering weight as well. Apparently I do nothing simply. So um, if you have the pattern, I'm doing the recipe for it twice for each type of stitch. So if that doesn't make sense, I also put a post on Instagram about what I did to convert it. There's one other switch in there and just to make it bigger because if I did it all in fingering the way the pattern is and it's made for, I think dream state is DK. It's made for DK. So it would have been, my color changes would have been way tinier but I wanted a solid color chunk. I also like fingering weight shawls more than heavy weight shawls just because I don't like feeling strangled by like five pounds of yarn around my neck. Um, and I think I'll get a lot of wear out of this. So it's a really fun pattern and easy to memorize. So I love it. So that's been on my needles. My current colors with that are cobblestone, I believe, and pink quartz. <laughs> I apologize for all the um, yarn barf hanging off all my balls. Um, so that's pink quartz and cobblestone. So that's been a fun thing. And you have something fun to share. Do you want to say how you got into it? Yeah. Um, okay. So mom showed me one of her books. It's called Boho Embroidery by Nicole Vogel Singer. So it's all sorts of embroidery patterns, st stitches, and it's really good. So I tried something by using, I think, three of the stitches in there. It's like a little flower next to a fern. Let me get this up close. There's two little flowers and there's a little fern and then a few scattered petals. And then I did this for, in the book it said you should try making a practice hoop. So all I did was move a smaller hoop over, but other, there's a big center of me trying to do it. And then mm -hmm. I just made a smaller one on the side. So these are all like practice stitches? Yeah. So that was pretty fun. I've had nothing to do with this. I let her just be free with my big bowl of embroidery thread. I always get asked, what's in your collar? <laughs> And it's my, my floss, embroidery floss collection. So that's here for her whenever she wants to. And she just found some fabric and went to town. So that's been fun watching that grow. She's getting really good at, um, at her stitches and learning things I don't even know how to do, which is quite cool. Very proud of you. <laughs> so, um, okay. I told you I started a lot of things. This is so bad. If you're trying not to start things, don't watch. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I think I have like, um, oh my goodness, too much. Okay. So um, this one's near and dear to my heart. I, I'll tell you what it is first. This is the yoke of a new sweater that I've cast on for myself. And it's kind of, it's kind of blowing out a little bit. It's, it's a peachy sort of pink. It kind of shows up like skin color. It's not really, it's more peach in real life with 
color work and the pattern is called I think I already have this ready. It's called Wow. Okay. Um something irresistible. <laughs> Simply irresistible? I'm not sure. I'll write it on the bottom. Um, by Jose Pacrin or you and I knit on Instagram. And I saw her wear it in person at Knit City last year. And I just loved, I loved the pattern. I loved how good it looked and, and uh, wanted to make my own. Again, this is, <laughs> I do this a lot. Um, heavier weight in the pattern. And I think because it was only one step down weight wise, I converted it to fingering. It's like the running theme with my stuff today. I converted it to fingering. Um, I love it. So about the yarn, this is the part that's special to me. So I was trying out a new supplier and I accidentally ordered the wrong yarn and it was serendipitous because the yarn I ordered was a non superwash um, fingering weight yarn and I have never had a non superwash or yeah a non superwash yarn that wasn't earthy or scratchy um, this one is um, it's a 19.5 micron fiber so it's incredibly soft it's four ply and it's just amazing it's amazing this yarn I love it so much and I wanted to knit with it before I started selling at the shop I have lots waiting there to die but I just wanted to it takes a little bit of time to learn how to dye it because it's different than superwash yarn I think in part because the whole process of making a yarn super wash is they take off this, I think it's scales on the exterior of the fiber. So because they do that, super wash yarn just sort of retains color super well. Whereas non super wash, I find it to be a little bit more, not stubborn, you just need to know what to do to, um, to get it to absorb all the dye. That said, it is absolutely a dream to work with. I have wanted to be able to use non-superwash yarn for a very long time. Um, part of it is the the qualities of non-superwash yarn, like the water, not waterproof, but water resistantness of it. It's so warm. Um, I just love the heritage of it. The fact that I can finally, and also because it's so soft, I can actually use something that I'm just really happy about and um, hard to explain without. It just feels like there's a long heritage with non-superwash and that it goes back generations and to have a yarn that I, is soft enough that I can wear on my skin without going red from is amazing to work with. So anyways, so I will at some point be putting this yarn into the shop. From my experience, um, non superwash yarns don't speckle very well, if at all. I've tried. <laughs> and so they'll likely be tonals, which is fine. And that's perfect for color work. So I have been developing a whole bunch of colors, which many of them are in my night shift uh, shawl that I just showed you, um, that are tonal colors, both in my Lux, which is a super wash base, and my Heritage, which is this, which is the non super wash. Um, lots of different colors have been coming, and there have been some definite favorites from people who've been in the shop, and some that just kind of sit there <laughs> so I don't know what I'll do with those but um it was very fun to just put my phone away not look at anything and just die and go back to the beginning of color theory and to see 
when you mix this color with this color, what do you get? How do you get different tones in a shade of color? Like, how do you get depth? It's been very fun. So I have lots of tonal yarn in the shop. Currently I'm craving dyeing speckles. So I have a different, I have another um, three, there's a total of three new sock bases that I'm introducing to the shop. So I have another one called Stellar Sock, which is an 85% merino, 15% nylon. It is super wash. So I've been doing some speckle work on that, which has been really fun. But in the meantime, um, oh, I remember the name. Impossible to resist, not irresistible, impossible to resist. So that's this. Anyway, so this, you'll be hearing more about this non-superwash yarn, Heritage, as it comes. I'm making slow and steady progress on that and loving it. I really, I kind of tested it on a little bit to see if it fits. I really hope it does because I had to do the conversion from the sizes of yarn. So it's a lot of stitches. Oh, I have a little visitor. Hello. Do you want to say hi? Say hi. <laughs> so this is Atticus. So here's another reason. <laughs> do you want to go see Dad? Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We'll come see you in a minute. And I broke a little heart. Um, what are we talking about? Uh, <laughs> hmm. Um, were we talking about the tonals? Tonal yarns. Oh, right. So tonal yarns. So I do have a whole bunch of Lux base tonals in the shop and I also have in stock Lux worsted. I haven't started dyeing them yet because I want to see what colors get liked. I might put up a, if there's interest, I might put up a dyed to order in the worsted weight and then I also have mini sizes and I really wanted to do this um, 50 gram skeins. So these are perfect for color work if you need just a little bit of color um, and not a whole skein of yarn because then you're left with this big thing at the end and don't know what to do with it or whatever. Um, so I will be rolling those out to the shop as soon as I get an idea on what colors I should be doing with them. So there's like 50 grams and 25 gram of the, of the, Lux sock and then also I have full skeins of the Lux worsted that I need to dye up. So let me know if you guys think I should be doing tonals or speckles or I have no idea. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of um stuck in that department right now. But I am knitting all the things and loving all of it. So um I should have. <laughs> save that for another day. So should we announce the winners of the giveaway? I don't want to be too long today. Chill, quick. Okay. So the first winner is going to get, I used a random number generator. First winner is going to get this pair of scissors from Warm Crochet. Try to see here. Yeah. And they're in a rose gold. Also a little notions pouch from me, some stitch markers, and also rose gold, as well as, I showed them last time, one of these three sets of um, stitch markers and progress keepers from my friend Leona of Blue Merlin Makes. So um, the first winner who gets this one and one of these is, I don't know how to say this because it's not, it's G-C-I-C-C-I, -C -C -I. so G-C-I-C-C-I -C -C -I, um, on Ravelry. And so if you're watching, send me a message and your address and I'll get that out to you, Stat. 
And then the next two, they'll each get one of these because I have three packets. They're all different, so I'm just gonna randomly pick. Um, is AKA Greenhouse on Ravelry. AKA Greenhouse. And the last one is C O I might be able to see Corellia. C O R E L L I A. So yeah, so you all won something. And I'd like to get those in the mail. So if you see this, can you please send me a message? Otherwise, I'll contact you in a few days to get them out to you. So that's the giveaway done. Um, oh, I never showed. I am so sorry. I'm bouncing around all over the place today. My brain is entirely on straight. But I want to show the main color for my sweater, my impossible to resist. So I'm just about done the pink part. It's going to fade into, or not fade, but it's going to end up being this on the bottom. And I have a full skein here. So it's like a warm, sort of taupey gray. It's such a beautiful day today. I can't, can't believe it. we've been having such great weather this week. That's the other thing, is it got really, really dark in December like really dark where it was getting, I mean, it does this every year, so it shouldn't be a surprise to me, but it's get, been getting dark at like 3.30. Just, so if it's a dark rainy day and then it's getting dark at 3.30 and you're just like, oh, so depressing. Um, I ended up buying some studio lights so that we can handle filming on days like that so that we're in focus and whatever. But, um, but today it's beautiful. It's kind of a, it's semi overcast, but sort of sunny day in January and the days are already getting longer which is exciting it's, the sun's up a little earlier and it's it's also up a little later at night too which is exciting so that is almost all we had to show you I'm gonna talk about um, oh December so December was kind of a funny month for us it was busy and chaotic a little bit we don't celebrate the holidays, but we did want to take the kids away for a vacation because um, Sam's been working an awful lot this last year nonstop and we haven't gone away with them for a very long time. And uh, the night, so we took them down to Oregon, the Oregon coast, we love Oregon so much, um, to Rockaway Beach. And the night we got there, in the middle of the night, Atticus came to my bed and he was super hot super hot fevering like 103 over 103 and then he pretty much ran a fever for I think it was almost seven days it was definitely six days um so the entire time we were in Oregon he was high fever and I don't mean like he was 100 he was like 103 um and we were rotating pain meds to keep his fever down so he had one day where I thought he rallied and had, not one day, one little tiny afternoon where I thought he had passed it and um, he got to play on the beach for like 45 minutes. But after that, he was back up to full fever. Um, I ended up taking him to the ER down in Tillamook because I just, there was nothing else to indicate him being sick other than just being completely well, sick with fever, but he didn't have a cold. He didn't have a flu other than a little bit of throwing up from medicine, partly probably because he wasn't eating. It was just awful. And I was so glad that he nursed still because that was his only sustenance really the entire time. So that was our family vacation this year, stressing out over poor little Atticus. And he was just so sick and so lethargic. He just laid there for days, just laid there on us, sat and snuggled and was sad anyway so we came home on a Wednesday nope Thursday Wednesday came home on a Wednesday I dropped everybody off at home uh, we unloaded the van and I went right to children's again so second hospital visit and they did more testing and they thought it was a roseola virus and I don't know that's you're supposed to get a rash with that but he never had a rash. He never manifested anything else, but he is 
blood pressure was so high. He was just so sick. It was very worrisome. But he's completely rallied. You saw him. <laughs> he's a total, he's back to the troublemaking days. And he's fine now. I just still have no idea what it was. But um, we did all the testing and he's okay. But that took up a lot of <laughs> time. And then within two days, we managed to get him sort of well enough that he could just just attend um, his grandma's wedding. So Sam's mom got married that weekend. So we managed to get some family photos before he lost it. And he slept through the wedding part actually. So I nursed him right before he slept through the wedding. And then my mom took um, both the two littles to her house so that or she, we dropped them off um, so that they could be watched while we had the reception, which was beautiful. And we wish Sam's mom all the best with her new, her husband. So that's been some of the things going on. Um, lots of school stuff. I did not expect, I've whined about this before. I did not expect teaching three kids in school to be quite this much work. Um, um, particularly kindergarten, but it's been good. We're getting a better handle on it now, sort of, kind of. It's a lot of work, <laughs> lots of work. So some days they just fly by. So I'd be like, I really need to podcast. Poof, there goes a week. Oh, we accidentally just turned off there. I think, are we good now? Are you filming? I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, School-wise, guys doing great. Um, do you want to talk about your new thing? Your new, yes. new thing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I've started taking horse riding lessons. So it's so much fun to, I did my first lesson last week mm -hmm. on Saturday, but it, for how many lessons are we doing it? Um, well, till as long as we can. Yeah. It's just so fun to do the horse riding and Learning to walk, learning to trot. Except I expect we'll be doing more trotting next time. It was so much fun. I had a horse named Roxy. Mm hmm So Sam, my husband, is paranoid about her horseback riding, but we convinced him it's just you have to respect that they're big animals. He's so afraid she'll like fall and be really hurt um but this is why you're learning with a teacher and it's been so nice i'm so jealous when i was a teenager i got to take care of some horses while my family was away and knock out stalls and feed them and i just i loved it so much it was such a huge forming part of my personality even though we don't have horses now but um i always want to have one <laughs> i always did so I'm very much living vicariously through Skylar and her horseback riding. So she is, um, thankfully with our school, the school's paying for a large portion of like 12 lessons. And then after that, Sky is going to be doing some, a little bit of a work credit program through the stables so she can pay for her lessons a little bit that way. And then also, um, She'll have to think of some ways to, <laughs> to earn money. So that'll be fun because I have a feeling this one won't go away. This, this, this fun thing. Oh, somebody's coming. Here we go again. <laughs> Honey, we're just filming okay. There we go. Anyway, so um, another thing that happened... <laughs> Just a second. Is um yeah, that's Skylar. Yeah. Is um Skylar dyed some yarn for a friend. She commissioned her to dye some yarn. And I have two boys fighting in the kitchen. This is super real life, guys. <laughs> this is about as organic. <laughs> there you go, buddy. But you can't touch the camera. Ooh, you want to, but you can't. <laughs> Mommy says no. Okay. Oh, well, that was fun. Um, 
sorry. Okay, you were saying you dyed some yarn for a friend. Can you tell us about the yarn? Um, the first one was gumball themed. So I did like a rainbow of colors, but they did them in little circles on the yarn. And then it turned out really nice. And then after that, I did a sort of blues and purples and then a bit of a sort of bright berry color. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you would call that, so. Yeah, you have to pick a name for her. Yes, I do. Um, I can look at it later. So she's been really wanting to re-dye that color. And I told her she can, if she wants to, she can start popping yarn in the shop. It was almost like covers the yarn and expenses part and she can make make some profit off that. And so that would be one way she could fund her, fund her lessons, but we'll see how that goes. School first though. Yeah. Always school first. And then, and then we'll see about the dyeing. But that's been really fun. And it was fun watching her pick her inspiration for her color for her second one. Um, and her friend loved him. So that was really exciting. It was definitely a fun time. Um, we are pretty much ready to wrap up simply because chaos reigns out there <laughs> and people apparently want to eat. But first, I just want to show you something else I'm working on that's really exciting. And this is, this doesn't count as a new project because it's a new design. I am designing a pair of socks with hair in it. Um, okay. This is big mess. <laughs> Why do I always do this? I'm so sorry. Okay, so this is, it's not gonna show up very well, but I have some pictures on my Instagram feed. This is my new, one of my new designs. I can't tell if you can see. It doesn't look like much when it doesn't have a blocker in it to show, but um, yeah, I haven't picked a name yet for the pattern. I'm getting close to wanting to put in um, the heel, I think. And then this is the yarn color that I've used. Also mine, it's called Wild Honey. And I have some of that in my new Stellar Sock in the shop right now. And then I wanted to see what it would look like with a contrast, like heel, toe, and sock, or heel, toe, and sock heel, toe, and cuff. Um, so I did a second cast on to see. And this is absolute yarn barf here. Oh no, I do have, sorry, I can't go yet. I have something else really exciting to show you too. So this is my second version of the same pattern that I'm working on. And this color is cobblestone on the bottom. And this is a new color, it's a tonal. It's one of Skylar's sweater colors actually that I've reused and it's called Pewter. I haven't named all the colors in your sweater, but I love, it's one of the slightly lavenderish gray. It was the second to last color, right? Second to last, I think so, yeah. Um, so Pewter and Cobblestone, and I actually have some sock sets of that with like a mini, a mini and a full skein in the shop. But what I was going to say, so this is coming. I will, once I get the whole pattern written out, I will be looking for testers. Um, it'll be my second sock pattern. I have another one for DK Way socks. But, okay, so y'all know I have my scrappy granny stripe afghan that I've been working on and it's growing quite well. It's <laughs> very, very large. Um, I love how this looks. So I also started another, um, I'm just gonna do my pile up this here. Another scrappy project. Okay, so I actually need to make myself another one of these finch buckets so I can separate between the two projects because some yarns will work better crocheted and some work better knit, I've discovered. And, um, so here's the new project. And this is and has been my obsession. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so, I do know why. It's because it's scrappy. I'm so hooked on it. 
So this is the Northeasterly Blanket. It's by Skeenanigans and I don't know what her name is on Ravelry, but it's just called Northeasterly Blanket. And you can find it on there just by searching. And it's knit. It's in garter. And I'm using up scraps and leftovers and minis. And here's one. I dyed this up as a mini to see about a new color and I absolutely love it. So I think I'm going to try and dye it in full skeins. And um, just remnants and bits and bobs from my experiments, experimenting and self-striping, which I think I failed on. So that's all going to go in here. And because it's knit, it shows off stripes better. So like this is a self-striping yarn from Mud Punch here, right? These bits here, ignore my bad manicure. Um, and it's just going to keep growing and growing because I have so much yarn. And I just, I really love it. I highly recommend the pattern. I also recommend if you do um, get the pattern, watch the video for how she joins or does her connecting join between the columns when you're knitting back on the wrong side. Um, because the first time, I think I started this like five times, but the first time I did it, I did it wrong. So it makes a really nice little sort of like seamed, can you tell, maybe, seamed edge there. And I think it's just lovely too, the back. I've been slowly weaving in ends as I go. I still have a bunch on this end. But um, I also knit, in the pattern you're just doing one thing at a time, I tend to have multiples going on at once just because like it and I like to be able to choreograph my colors a little bit better than one at a time so I'll do them simultaneously so I have currently these are my needles and I have these one two three columns going at once so that's been a really fun TV project so when I first started this I was like no I'm gonna change it I'm gonna make it a wider amount of stitches a different needle or make to make it faster or um, I tried, I think, four different variations of needle size and gauge, and in the end, I just love it the way it is, the way it is in the pattern. I tried stockinette even, too, and that is just, oh, I have a split stitch. I'm going to have to grab that. That is just not, it's just not as squishy as garter, and I have a runaway in the kitchen again. Okay, so we are going to have to wrap it up. So congratulations to the winners and I hope you guys don't mind my slightly more organic version of our podcast and no question answer this time just kind of keep it chill and catch up with you guys it's been fun to show you what we've been working on and yeah I hope you join us next time too so thank you so much for for um for tuning in and we'll see you next time See you.